Good day everyone! We are still on the sixth week of our discussion. In today's lesson, we are expected to learn to solve problems involving polynomial equations. But before we proceed with the discussion, let us first answer the pretest. Read each statement carefully and choose the letter of the best answer. Great! I know you can do it! Let us recall the roots of polynomial equation. The roots of polynomial equation are the values of x for which the polynomial is equal to 0. In our previous lesson, we also discussed the fundamental theorem of algebra, which states that if a polynomial equation of degree n and with real coefficients, then it has at most n real roots. We also discussed multiple roots of a polynomial. If a polynomial has x minus c occurring as a factor exactly n times, then c is a root of multiplicity n of the polynomial equation. To solve polynomial equations for their roots, the steps are listed below. First, transform the polynomial equation into standard form if necessary. 2. Factor the polynomial expression. 3. Apply the zero product property. 4. Solve each resulting equation. And lastly is to check the answer. Rational root theorem will have a big part in our lesson for today. Let us recall, rational root theorem states that if the coefficients of the polynomial equation are integers, then each of the rational roots, after being reduced to lowest terms, has a factor of the constant for its numerator and a factor of the leading coefficient for its denominator. If p over q is a rational root of the polynomial equation, where p over q is in lowest terms, then p is a factor of the constant and q is a factor of the leading coefficient. Whenever a polynomial has positive negative 1 as the leading coefficient, then any rational root will be an integer that is a factor of the constant term of the polynomial. Now let us have example number 1. Find the rational roots of 4x cubed minus 16x squared plus 11x plus 10 equals 0. For the solution, we have... First is to list all possible numerators coming from the factors of our constant term, which are positive negative 1, positive negative 2, positive negative 5, and positive negative 10. Next is to list all possible denominators coming from the factors of our leading coefficient, which are positive negative 1, positive negative 2, and positive negative 4. Dividing the factors of the constant by the factors of the leading coefficient will give us the list of possible rational roots. Let us try out negative 1 and negative 1 half from the list of the possible rational roots. We can see from the synthetic division that the remainder after using negative 1 is not 0. Therefore, negative 1 is not a root of the polynomial. On the other hand, negative 1 half gave us a result of a remainder of 0. Therefore, negative 1 half is a root of the polynomial. The depressed equation 4x squared minus 18x plus 20 equals 0 is a quadratic equation and can be factored out using other factoring techniques. Applying zero product property to solve for the two values of x, we have x is equal to positive 5 over 2 and positive 2. Therefore, 
the three roots of the polynomial equation are negative 1 half, positive 5 over 2, and positive 2. Let us now proceed with example number 2. Find the rational roots of 2x raised to 4 plus 9x cubed plus 15x squared plus 11x plus 3 equals 0. For the solution we have, first is to list all possible numerators coming from the factors of our constant term. Positive negative 1 and positive negative 3. Next is to list all possible denominators coming from the factors of our leading coefficient which are positive negative 1 and positive negative 2. Divide the factors of our constant by the factors of our leading coefficient to get the list of all possible rational roots. Since all the terms in the polynomial are positive, the possible values that are positive can be eliminated. Let us try out negative 1, negative 3, negative 1 half, and negative 3 over 2 in synthetic division. Using negative 1, we can see that the remainder is equal to 0. Therefore, negative 1 is a root of the polynomial. Trying negative 1 again in the polynomial, we can see that the remainder is 0. The remainder is again 0, so negative 1 is again a root of the polynomial. The depressed equation 2x squared plus 5x plus 3 equals 0 is a quadratic equation and can be factored out using other factoring techniques. Applying zero product property to solve for the remaining values of x, we have x is equal to negative 3 over 2 and negative 1. Therefore, the three roots of the polynomial equation are negative 1 with a multiplicity of 3 and negative 3 over 2. Now, moving on, finding polynomial equation with the given roots. To construct a polynomial from the given roots, set x equal to each root and move everything to one side. Then, multiply each resulting equation. For each item below, give a polynomial equation with integral coefficients that has the following roots. Letter A. The roots are 0, negative 1, and positive 2. Solution. Set x equal to each root and move everything to one side. Then, multiply each resulting equation. The roots will give us the polynomial equation that is equal to x cubed minus x squared minus 2x equals 0. For letter B, the given roots are 2, positive 1 third, and negative 1. For the solution, we have set x equal to each root and move everything to one side. Then, multiply each resulting equation. The given roots will give us a polynomial equation in the form 3x cubed minus 4x squared minus 5x plus 2 equals 0. Let us now have model situations using polynomial. Example number 1. The area of the rectangle is given by the polynomial expression x cubed minus 3x squared minus 6x plus 18 and its length given by x minus 3. Find the width of the rectangle in terms of x. The area of the rectangle is equal to x cubed minus 3x squared minus 6x plus 18. While the length of the rectangle is equal to x minus 3. The formula for the area of the rectangle is given by area is equal to length times width. Using synthetic division to solve for the value of the width, we have the quotient is the width of the rectangle. Hence, the width of the rectangle is x squared minus 6. Let us now have example number 2. 
The distance covered by a bike is given by the expression 2x squared plus x minus 21. The time taken by the bike to cover this distance is given by the expression x minus 2. Find the speed of the bike. For the solution, we have, since the formula for the distance is speed times time, hence we can easily derive formula of speed from this formula of distance. The formula for speed will be, speed is equal to distance over time. Put the values in the above formula to get the speed. Speed is equal to 2x squared plus x minus 21 divided by x minus 3. Using synthetic division, we have, hence, the speed of the bike is 2x plus 7, which is the quotient when we divide 2x squared plus x minus 21 by x minus 3. Example number 3. One dimension of the cube is increased by 1 inch to form a rectangular block. Suppose that the volume of the new block is 80 cubic inches. Find the length of an edge of the original cube. For the solution, let x be the side of the cube. To solve for the volume of the cube, we'll be using the formula x raised to 3. The volume of the rectangular block is equal to x squared times x plus 1. For the equation, we have x squared times x plus 1 is equal to 80. Combining all terms in one side, we have x cubed plus x squared minus 80 is equal to 0. Look for rational roots by applying the rational root theorem. Using synthetic division and using positive 4 as a divisor, we have a remainder of 0. Hence, the length of an edge of the original cube is 4 inches. Now, let us try to answer the following activities. Activity 1. Let's practice. Find the roots of the following polynomial equations. For activity number 2, keep practicing. Find a polynomial equation with integral coefficients that has the given number as roots. For our last activity, read the problem carefully and write the letter that corresponds to the correct answer. To wrap it up, Rational Root Theorem states that if a given polynomial where a sub 0, a sub 1 to a sub n are integers and p over q in lowest terms is a rational root of the polynomial equation, then p is an integer factor of the constant term and q is an integer factor of the leading coefficient. Remember, to construct a polynomial from given roots, simply set x equal to each root and move everything to one side. Then, multiply each resulting equation. For our reflection, understand that organizing our thinking processes and thinking logically are important in problem solving and in solving problems related to everyday life. Share your thoughts and insights about the given statement in 3-5 to five sentences. Now, let us answer the post-test. Read each statement carefully and choose the letter of the best answer. Good job everyone! I hope you have learned a lot today.